Aunt Vi gets her power back and Micah, you need your ass whooped. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy Kenny and this is Queen Sugar Season 4 Episode 12 and the name of this episode is Here. This was a really good episode and as I mentioned in the um, in my preview, yes, Amvi got her power back and I was so happy to see it. But Micah, I am going to come for your ass because what you did was some serious messy shit but um i'm gonna get to it so let me begin um the first thing i'm gonna talk about is um ralph angel and um blue um you know ralph angel and blue are pretty much doing like some spring cleaning in the house and then all of a sudden nova shows up and blue tells blue wants to run out and say hi to on nova and, and like you know ralph angel like nah you know you need to be in here cleaning like i told you but he's like i haven't seen no Aunt nova in a long time and he was like you know like i said you know get back to doing what you what i told you to do and don't worry about on nova right now so of course this definitely made blue feel some kind of way so we see ralph angel goes out there to um to uh to talk to Nova. so we see that ralph angel goes out there to talk to nova they go back and forth and ralph angel literally lets nova have it he was saying that oh so you think because you done made peace with a few people that you can that is you, i'm just gonna instantly forgive you for what you did blue's in therapy because of you and she's like what and she's like yeah some kid at school told him that i wasn't his biological father and then darla three years sober has now gone out of the window you know she relapsed but i'm like yeah nova's book definitely did send Darla on a downward spiral, but she relapsed after learning the truth about that night that Blue was conceived. That's what really made her start drinking. You know, but I have to say, you know, Nova, you kind of created the, the conditions where she, if she was actually, if this book wasn't on her mind and her going through that, she probably would have been stronger to deal with that situation. So Nova had a hand in it, but I'm not going to say Nova made Darla relapse. I'm, I'm not going to give Noah all of that, you know, but, but if anything, Ralph Angel pretty much told us straight up, like, you know, what, like, why, you know, why even have, you know, enemies like the Landry's when I got my sister Nova Bordelon standing right in front of me? That hurt Nova to her heart, but I'm like, Nova, you got to eat it. You got to eat it, baby, because when you did that book, you thought you were doing some good, but all you did was railroad your family and you created a whole bunch of problems. But now she got to eat that. Like, yo, you hurt a lot of people with this. So with that situation, yeah, that was that was crazy. So then we see later on, you know, um, Ralph Angel, um, you know, takes Blue to see Darla. So you know, Blue and Darla are playing outside and she comes in to talk to Ralph Angel. Um, and she pretty much tells Ralph Angel, thank you for believing in me, you know, and, and he, um, and then Ralph Angel's like, yeah, you know, I had to bring him here to see you because right now he mad at me because I didn't let him see Nova, you know. Um, and she pretty much, uh, you know, sat down and had a conversation with him. And I was actually, I was actually proud of, of Darla in this moment. Because Darla was like, so, the fact that you ain't let him see Nova, what you gonna tell him the next time? And he was like, next time? She was like, yeah, Nova's gonna be around the family, what? You're gonna ignore her every single time you see her? You know, and I understand where you're coming from, Ralph. I'm mad at her too. But... Blue, Blue loves her, and she loves Blue. You know, Blue shouldn't have to pay for the fact that we're mad at her. You know, so we have to be the bigger, we have to, you have to be the bigger person in this situation. You know, I understand you got issues with your sister. I got issues with her ass too. But Blue is innocent in all of this. And as, and as of now, you see that Blue's upset with you 
because he wants to see his auntie Nova and he doesn't know what's going on. So, you know, we we, we kind of like have to be the bigger people in the situation and, you know, let Blue be around his aunt. And Ralph Angel's just like, yeah, I hear you, but I ain't there yet. Yeah, we definitely can tell. But yeah, but as far as that whole situation, though, I mean, as far as Ralph, um, yeah, I hope you and Darla work out, but I'm still not going to forget the fact that what you did to Daisha on the last episode, that was dead fucking wrong, bruh. So, keep your eyes open. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. And next, I'm going to go into Nova and on by situation. Um, Nova is doing some deep digging and she comes across this guy named Harper Campbell, who's a part of Old World Energies, because she had called the Daily News, because she's trying to find more and more, you know, information that's going to help Charlie in her, in her race. And she gets a knock on the door, and it's Aunt Vi. Aunt Vi pretty much says that she wants her to give, to give her Jimmy Deal's address, and, and if anything, you know... Of course, Nova's like, well, why do you want to do that? Like, are you are you crazy? And she's like, I don't need to tell you anything. You know, just give me his address. And pretty much, you know, Nova's like, no, you're not telling me the full truth. And you're talking about confronting him alone? I don't think so. Um, and pretty much, uh, Anvai was like, you unleashed this demon. Now I got to get rid of it. So... Pretty much Nova says, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the address, but I'm going to drive and you're going to have to talk to me. And uh, Ambai agrees, okay, you can drive, but I'll talk to you whenever I'm ready to. So we saw that go on. And then while they're driving, you know, uh, Vi tells Nova, you got it wrong in your book. You talking about some, um, you want to celebrate my triumph, you know, you know. You know, what try she says that, yeah, you want to talk about you're celebrating my triumph, but, you know, what have I actually triumphed? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm still holding on to all of this. So, yeah, I may have had triumphant moments, but, you know, I, I still, I'm still triumphant because even though I had these bad moments, I still, I still continue to move on. I can I still continue to do what I needed to do. And she's like, I showed you what a triumphant woman was. You saw it. And yet you will put that trash in your book. Cause she says that you got it wrong. You know, you know, yeah, I may have had triumphant moments, but when have I actually triumphed? And this is exactly what Vi does in this scene. Because next thing you know, we see that they pull up on Jimmy Dale's house. Jimmy Dale's house looked like some straight up shit. It looks just like the man. Because all of a sudden, she goes to knock on the door. You know, she had that box. Remember, she was in that box and she pulled out that, um, you know, that hospital band and all of that. We later, we find out what that hospital band was all about. And shout out to um, Lynette and Stanley from Random TV Reviews. They pointed it out in their in their um, reviews when she was going through that box a few episodes back that this um, that this that this uh, you know uh, you know hospital band was representation that she lost a baby due to Jimmy Deal's abuse and he did mention I took something from you like yeah she she took he took away her 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 ability to be a mother because he. He beat her so bad that probably not only did she lost the baby, but now she can no longer have children, probably. So, so yeah, shout out to my family, Lynette and Stanley from, Ran from um, Random TV Reviews. Love those guys. So, she knocks on the door. Jimmy Deal comes all cocky and shit, looking like some shit. Tell me something. Hmm. I knew you'd be back. I'm like, you nasty motherfucker. Ugh. And... And she gives him the box, and he was like, and he said, and like he opens it, and you know he sees the baby band, you know the um hospital band. He's like, oh, am I supposed to feel something? And she says that, what she she pretty much tells him that look, this has been a burden on me, but this is a burden as to as as to what you did, and I can't carry it no more. 
this burden's on you. And then all of a sudden, he starts getting all slick with the mouth talking shit. And pretty much um, Nova, Nova runs, because Nova is there to back up her aunt. So this is where Nova earns her place back in Aunt Vi's, in Aunt Vi's um, good graces. Because in this situation, Nova was there to back her up. And Nova ran up there and said, Aunt Vi, you don't need to take this shit. You don't need to deal with this. You're above this. And he was like, yeah, you better listen to her. You know you ain't never had no sense. And we kind of see that, you know, Aunt Vi kind of buckles a little bit. And then they about to leave. And that evil son of a bitch literally takes the whole box and he breaks it. Throws it down. But when he did that, that unleashed Vi in a way that freed her and she began to let that piece of shit Jimmy Deal have it, y'all. She started to dig in his ass. And I was so happy. She pretty much said that, huh, I ain't got no sense, huh? You had to clean up to come see me made yourself look like you had it together but as you can see this damn house is a piece of shit just like you you know i'm the one that won i got my own business i got my own house yes my house um i got my respect and i got love and you you ain't got nothing you just a old down dirty dog look at you your primes over and you just rotting away just like this house you ain't shit and i was like yes why that's what i'm talking about baby claim your power back that's exactly what i'm talking about i said when he when he broke that box that all that stuff that she was holding on inside finally let go and i'm like finally Vi. Vi finally had her moment when she stood up to his ass. And then the next thing you know, we see this young girl come up who went shopping for Jimmy Dill, which is Jimmy Dill's new girlfriend. He got a younger girl, and he's beating on her. Because you see that she's bruised up and everything. Oh, Vi immediately intervened. And she pretty much says that, no, you don't need this. You don't, you don't have to go back to this. You do have choices. You may think that this is the only choice you have. I was just like you 30 years ago. Where because you the food was too cold. Or the sheets weren't crisp like he liked it. And he will beat the crap out of you. I was you 30 years ago. You don't need to deal with this. You deserve better. And then... And then like you see Jimmy Dale trying to intervene. Tell me something. Don't listen to her. She don't know what she's talking about. And then like... I'm by was like... Um, Jimmy Dill, two grown-ups are having a conversation, which means this ain't got nothing to do with you. And then he thought he was going to run down and do something to Vi. Oh, uh, immediately, uh, Nova was like, I dare you. Try it. Uh-huh. Make a move. And that shut his ass right down because Jimmy Dill's a bitch. And she exposed the fact that he's a coward. And that he likes to prey on people that he feels is weaker than him. And... She tells old girl, you need to drop that bag of groceries and come with me. Because if you go back in there, you're going to continue to be treated with disrespect and all of that. And old girl dropped them groceries and got in the car with them. I was like, yes, bye. Not only did you stand up to the son of a bitch, but you actually helped a, a young girl who was also being abused by that piece of shit. And he's just talking shit like, I'm going to get you back for this, boy. You ain't done. I ain't, you ain't, I, uh, I ain't done with you yet. I'm going to get you. I'm like, Jimmy Deal, you're done. You are so fucking done because she no longer fears you. So, and she got Hollywood on her team and we saw how Hollywood beat that ass. And... You know, we see that they end up taking the girl to uh, to a women's shelter and pretty much said that, look, you're going to learn new skills. You're going to be able to take care of yourself. You don't need to go back to that. And she's good with the woman there because I think this was the same center that Vi had went to after she had left Jimmy Dale. 
and she pretty much told her that look if she even attempts to go back to him you call me and let me know and she also said that you can always reach out to me if you need me i'm here for you i'm like that was everything and we saw that this actually put vi and um and um nova back in a good place with each other i mean it was a very you know moving moment because later on we see the two of them talking you know and she says that you know this moment really helped me to realize that i'm no longer looking back it's about the here and now and i'm breaking bad cycles and you know just no more secrets and i'm like yes bye thank you because it's these secrets that have been killing her and this it, that's initially the intentions that nova had with the book blessings and blood that by getting rid of our secrets it actually frees us but the way she went about it was wrong and you know some of the things she wrote in the book was wrong also so as i said nova had good intentions bad execution but we see at that moment you know vi was like no more secrets you know because those secrets were killing her um and she thanks nova for being with her so we definitely got that now i'm gonna talk about you know charlie and micah we see in the beginning of the episode um with charlie and micah Charlie is decking out the house because her son is going to Harvard. She is on cloud nine. She is, and she is, she is excited. But we see that he still don't know what he wants to do, you know, with his life and all of that. And he's just, he's just being like real, you know, kind of going along with the shit. Like he's not even excited. And it's like Charlie's more excited about it than he is. So we definitely saw that. And then we see later on him and um him and uh what's her name uh kiki him and kiki go to a museum and they have this discussion and she was saying that you know do you know what you really want to do with your life i mean you know high school graduation is approaching we're both going to be going to college i mean do you know what you want to do and you know what about photography i thought that was your passion i thought that was something that you love and he was saying that, yeah, it's a hobby of mine, but that doesn't mean I want to make it my career. And then they also discussed their relationship and seeing that, you know, she's supposed to be going to Tulane University, which is up in New York. And he's supposed to be going to Harvard. As I said, supposedly going to Harvard. And I'm about to get to that because I'm about to let Micah's ass have it. Because I was like, bruh, you wrong as fuck of how you executed this shit. But then he was saying that, you know, is does this mean that you know this is like the beginning of the end for us because they said that you know we'll see each other during breaks and stuff like that when we come home to visit but yeah it's gonna be like a long distance situation so that they're, they're they're pretty much now at this crossroads as to the fact that they're going in different directions what does that mean for their relationship where their relationship lasts and in most cases they nearly do in most cases they don't last because you're you're living separate lives so then we're back at campaign headquarters, you know, you know, Charlie running for city council. They're showing Jacob's press conference where he um, and they're pretty much saying that he's actually losing some of his some of his demographic as far as his voters and all of that. Um, and then Prosper comes up to comes to Charlie and Prosper lets her know that um, that, you know, he lets her know that he couldn't vote because he's not a resident and she's like what do you mean you've been over you've been in this parish for years what you mean but then he also let lets it be known that nah it's the same problem for a lot of people who've been here for years and they can't even vote and we literally see that yes they are they have literally rigged the voting system you know this is this is common practice even in the political realm you know, as far as, you know, voting for the president, we've dealt with this, you know, where certain voting machines aren't working or they at the last minute change the location. And a lot of people in the community can't get to the new location because it's out of out of the realm of public transportation, you know, so they play in all these games. And then we see Francis, oh, you know, wrinkled face that ass come up in there and she was like, you turned my you what did you do to my son 
and pretty much, you know, uh, you know, you've exposed him to all of this, you know, crazy demographics and all of this. And, you know, Charlie had me rolling. She was like, well, what do you mean, um, Cousin Francis? I don't declare. I was like, yes! She better serve it to a racist ass because Francis is a piece of crap. And and she was saying that, oh, I whatever do you mean? You know, I know probably what was released probably would turn the heads of, you know, of your group, the Daughters of Confederacy, but it's the truth. I mean, all I did was shake the tree. It's not my fault who falls out of it, bitch. I was like, you better give it to her, Charlie. And then all of a sudden, here she is talking about some, oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I see you, Charlie. But only one thing I'm going to tell you is that, you know, pride goeth before the fall. And then all of a sudden, we see two police come up, and they want to ask her questions about the fire. And then she was like... Well, it seems like you busy already. I'm like, oh, Francis, you evil bitch. Because they want to do everything they can to discredit Charlie because they want they want Jacob in that seat so they can push their agenda forward. And we're seeing that Old World Energies is far bigger than they thought. And I'm definitely going to tie, tie, um, tie into that in a second. Um, so then we see that... Uh, you know, the cops um, pretty much said that there, there was a propane um, trip, um, there was a propane um, trip torch that was used to as, a, as an accelerant to start the fire at the mill. And then they start spending it on like, well, doesn't your brother, you know, doesn't he um, raise cane at the farm? And she was like, yeah, but my brother had nothing to do with this. Um, and, and then they start going in like, um, well... Uh, you know, I can imagine, you know, you running a, uh, you know, you running a meal was very costly, and I'm pretty sure it definitely hurts you financially and all of that. Oh, Charlie immediately shut that down. She's like, first of all, number one, I'm wealthy, and second, you know, why don't y'all tell, like, you know, uh, why, why don't y'all investigate Francis Boudreaux and Old World Energies, because I'm pretty sure they had a hand in this. Um... And then they decided to go in about Micah. Like, wasn't um, your your son involved with the uh, arson, with arson and all of that? You remember when they burnt down, you know that, um, you know that uh, that shack at the plantation? Um, and immediately, uh, she shut them down. She was like, first of all, you are no longer gonna. Um, I'm not gonna no longer ask any more questions. I'm not going to um, answer any more questions until I have my attorney here with me. So and so until then, y'all can leave. And she dismissed their asses. And I'm like, that was that was that was real because Charlie is now seeing that they are really playing dirty. So she has a meeting with um, with her crew, you know, and pretty much she lets them know that look, they're going to pull every trick, everything they can to. Um, you know, they're relocating polling places and all of that. They're rigging the voting system. They want to do everything they can to see that we don't win. But, and pretty much Prosper interjects and was like, yeah, it's a new twist on an old, on an, on an old trick. You know, but what we're going to do is that we're going to establish a phone tree. That's right. You know, we got Pastor Martinez, who I'm going to be in touch with, and we're going to help people who voting areas have been relocated we're going to provide transportation to get people down to vote you know we're not going to lay down and die we're going to fight and i thought that was everything and then we see that nova and charlie have a discussion and nova is saying that you know this whole thing with old world energies rigging the votes you know that this whole situation is bigger than the landry's and the boudreaux you know and who is it uh, who's behind this that they hide their existence who are these people and what we what we got to do is get to the bottom of it and Nova intends to do so so now I'm gonna talk about Micah's you know graduation party you know you got literally Harvard memorabilia throughout the place um, we see um, then we um, while they're at the party we get this situation with blue Nova and Ralph Angel blue wants to go sit with our Nova and 
you know, he's being extra like, no, you can't, no, stay right here. You can't go over there and no, all this other shit. And then all of a sudden he um, tells Blue, well, go to the bathroom and wash your hands. And then Vi says, um, don't put that boy in the middle of this mess. And then Ralph Angel being childish is like, well, just because y'all forgive her doesn't mean I have to. I'm like, hmm. But then in the bathroom, he has a conversation with Blue, and Blue gets Ralph together. He was saying that, you know, why are you mad at Auntie Nova? He was like, how do, what makes you think I'm mad at Auntie Nova? He's like, I can tell yesterday I heard you. I'm like, kids pay attention. Y'all forever think that these kids don't see anything. Kids are very observant. They see things. They're not dumb, okay? <laughs> like, so he's seeing that Blue is very bright, as we all know. And he was saying that yeah, your, um, your auntie Nova did something really bad, and I'm I'm still I'm really upset with her. But then he talks about him and a friend at school. Now, mind you, this is the same friend who told Blue that Ralph wasn't his daddy, but they're still friends. And then he said that me and him had a fight over this toy and everything, and we just decided that we both gonna take two turns, and everything worked out fine. And and he said that you know maybe you and Aunt Nova can work it out that way. And then he pretty much says, okay, if you want to go sit with, the, with your aunt Nova, you can. And he's like, okay, I will. <laughs> I was like, you go, Blue. Love me some Blue. Um, and shout out to Ethan Hutchison. He does a phenomenal job playing that character. He's a good actor. Good young young actor, by the way. Like, yes. But, yeah, he got, he got Ralph Angel all the way together that you acting like a petty bitch and you need to kind of, like, you need to mend fences with your sister and stop preventing me from interacting with her because you got issues with her. So then we get a situation with um, Micah, you know, every, you know, we see that Charlie's giving a speech about, um, about, you know, um, Micah going to Harvard, you know, everybody's toasting, giving cheers and all of that. And then this little motherfucker decides to drop a bomb on her that he's not going to Harvard he's going to Xavier University and Charlie is pissed as she should be because I'm like are you serious bruh so you mean to tell me you had this in your back pocket the whole time and you wait to your graduation party after she is excited about you going to Harvard in Boston Massachusetts and you decided that, oh, I'm not going to do that. I resent my acceptance letter back to Harvard. I'm going to Xavier University. You know, I see how you're doing great things in the community. And I want to be right here. I want to be a part of this. And I want to do, I want to be right here. And Charlie was going around the room looking at Nova. Looked at Kiki like, y'all knew about this shit? They's like, we ain't know nothing, honey. And, she, and he's like, I didn't tell anybody. I just did this. And I'm like, Michael, you are asshole. You are a straight up asshole. Now, correct me. Now, don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not against him for making a different decision. I'm against him of how he executed it. And you made your mother look like an asshole in front of everybody. And she says that, do you think I was sending you Harvard to Harvard for an education? Universities are not about education. And then Nova's like, well, what are they about this? She says, it's about connections. You can make the kind of connections that can change things for our people. And you chose to throw that away when you had access to that. But he was like, you know, I don't want to be a part of that Harvard community. I want to be here and I want to, you know, find my own path. And I'm like, see, this is definitely from the playbook of Davis West. He is a lot. He was literally acting like his father in this scene where he making moves and completely doesn't give a shit of how it affects Charlie. And Charlie was like, in this situation, after all that I've done to try to give you a better future and you pull this shit, how dare you, Micah? How dare you? And she walks off and I'm and, the, and the Micah just sits there looking all plain. I'm like, Micah needs his ass whooped. You need your ass whooped for how you pulled this shit off, Micah. Because it just went that you, even though, even though you had um, reservations against Harvard, you should have talked to your mother and y'all should have come to some type of agreement. 
but you were literally went behind her and did this whole damn thing and then threw it up in her face where she has literally decked the whole house with Harvard memorabilia and you made her look foolish you little disrespectful bastard like oh he pissed me off I'm like Micah you you are so fucking childish and so self-centered and spoiled that it's ridiculous because we even saw it in the last episode with him and his friends they all talking about what they want to do with their life and he's saying he don't know but yet you got opportunity to go to Harvard but you don't know what you want to do you're a child of privilege but you don't know what but you don't know what you want to do so I'm like Micah got some issues and he need to get his shit together and with this situation here he has officially pissed his mother off because his mother worked her ass off tirelessly to try to give her son uh, you know the best opportunities money has to offer and here it is he want to blow it off on some bullshit but you know or, or well, I won't say bullshit because I don't think HBCUs are bullshit I went to an HBCU I, I, mean, I didn't graduate from one but I've attended one and I'm all about HBCUs. I used to grow up, I actually grew up from one, you know, in, in Durham, North Carolina. I grew up right down the street from North Carolina Central University. And it's a public university, so I used to go there all the time. So there's nothing wrong with HBCUs. It's the fact that here it is, you didn't discuss that with your mother. And you literally left your mother in the dark and you made her, you made a fool out of her in front of everybody. And I just thought that that was just a very poor taste. I thought it was very childlike. And I thought it was very disrespectful to her. And it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool at all. But get down on those comments and let me know what you think. That's what I have, y'all. Get down on those comments and let me know your thoughts about this. Um, um, and if I missed anything or if you got thoughts about this episode, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Queen Sugar. I think next week is the season finale. And I can't wait to see how this goes down. Because we see that Nova finally brings Charlie around the fam. Uh, Nova finally brings Calvin around the family. So I'm on edge to see how that's going to go down. So until next time, everybody, take care.